Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Aloha and welcome to a special edition of Hiki no, coming to you from Kaimaki High School, home of the Bulldogs, here in Honolulu on the island of Oahu. This episode is the second in a series of six shows focusing on Hawaiian values. Each installment will focus on a specific value and will feature stories about people who live their lives based on that value. The Hawaiian value for this episode is kuleana, which means responsibility. For example, a new feature here at Kamaki High School requires students to take more kuleana or responsibility in managing their time and priorities. With our new bell list system, the students themselves are responsible for being in the correct class at the correct time. Some students have overlapping classes that require them to determine in which class they need more time and assistance. It is then their responsibility to communicate their needs to the appropriate teachers. Our first story of Kuleana comes from students at Waianae High School on the west side of Oahu. It's about an ultimate fighting championship fighter from Waianae who feels it is his Kuleana or responsibility to represent his community in the best possible light when he competes. <laughs> As we get older, we gain more and more responsibility, or Kuleana. Max Holloway is no exception. You know, but now I have a family, I have a son, I have a wife, and uh, it, it's it's super, it's super like just yes. Yeah, baby. Me and my wife got married a month after he got born. I gotta buy cars, you know, I gotta buy car insurance for cars, you know. We rent out a place, so we gotta pay rent. The responsibility Max feels towards his wife and son stems from the neglect he faced as a child. My mom was a crazy ice user, you know. Thank God she's clean now, but she was. My dad just kind of left, you know, and, and I, I didn't ever want to be like that. And that was a fire under me for a long time. So I just wanted to show him, you know, what a family in my eyes is supposed to be. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, nice thanks, meeting man. you. No, thank, thank you, you man. Yeah. Thank you. Not only is he responsible for a household, but also a reputation. Everybody is like, you're from Wayne, you're going to be a loser. Heavy drug users, nothing but punks, people who want to fight all the time, people who don't have education, people who's not, who's not smart, people who's going to only end up doing low income jobs, you know? You just. You cannot feed into the negativity. Max fights this negativity through pursuing his profession in the Ultimate Fighting Championship, otherwise known as the UFC. I signed my contract when I was 19 years old. August 23rd in Canada, I'll be fighting uh, the main event. It's my first main event with the UFC. Five minutes round against a dangerous opponent named uh, Charles Oliveira. You know, he's on a four win streak with three stoppage and I'm on a six win streak with five stoppage. So it's getting tough to be whoever wins this one probably gets the next title shot. All I can do is train hard and go out there and fight night. Just hope everything goes my way and come out the victor. But the most important win to him hits closer to home. I don't spend time with them, you know, and that's for like eight, six weeks at a time, you know. Down. Sit. Go. So when my hand get raised and you know when I see my paycheck and and when I finally get to get home and just relax you know it's it's the greatest feeling in the world. His responsibility towards his family and community gives Max Holloway the motivation to become a better fighter and father. This is Diamond Tuisano from Waianae High School for Ikino. Our next story comes from a school that to a great degree was founded on the Hawaiian value of Kuleana. Princess Bernice Pauahi Bishop felt that it was her responsibility to make sure that children of Hawaiian ancestry receive a top-notch education. Thus was founded the Kamehameha Schools. Here students from the Kapalama campus honor the princess and her Kuleana by giving back. Our hope was that we could just have one day to give back to Pauahi and most importantly not just to give back to Pauahi, but to give alongside Pauahi. 
she, in my eyes, is the epitome of what servant leadership is. While the term servant leadership may be all the buzz today, it was an idea that our school's founder took to heart over 150 years ago when she passed on her fortune to educate Hawaiian children. Following in her footsteps, Kamehameha students hope to fulfill her legacy through their experiences during Senior Service Day. Senior Service Day actually started as a massive trash pickup day in Waimanalo. And it was an effort that we did just to see how our students would react. So it's, a, it's a, an ohana effort that has uh, really taken on a life of its own. With over 1,500 collective volunteer hours serving more than 15 community organizations annually, the efforts are massive. But some ask, does one day really make a difference? We're going to devote this day to at least planting that seed of servant leadership in our students now. And maybe a year from now, it'll, it'll nourish and, and, and grow. Maybe 20 years from now, they'll reflect back on it and remember, oh, I remember that day. Uh, my senior service project was at Hanama Bay. We did a lot of, um, I think we did weeding or something like that. Even though it was something small, it contributed to the overall look of Hanama Bay. And through that, we can share our culture more with the visitors that come here. After I graduated, I felt like I had to keep staying involved in things. So I found community service opportunities where I would be able to connect more spiritually with what I was doing so that it became more of a lifestyle rather than going out and just doing community service. While alumni may appreciate these lessons outside of the classroom, current college-bound seniors may not realize the significance of going beyond the books. Why is this your Like most students would say, oh, what's the point of me doing service? It's not helping me any. Well, if they look deeper, it actually does help them a lot. I mean, it, gr it helps you grow as, in character as a person. And these, these types of lessons cannot be taught in the classroom. So I think lots of, lots of students and lots of alumni still do service because it helps them to feel the happiness that comes from giving service and they want to recreate that by giving more service to their community. It really did help to shape who I am today. The important thing is it taught me how to not go around and volunteer everywhere, which is I'm sure everyone would like to do that, but to focus on specific places where I can dedicate most of my time to, to make more of an impact. Volunteering time and labor may not earn straight A's or a college degree, but it can help to cultivate the servant leaders needed to fulfill Princess Hawaii's legacy and shape the future of Hawaii. For Kamehameha Schools, I'm Kiana Lidstone Kayabia, reporting for Hikino. We're back at Kaimuki High School in Honolulu for a special edition of Hikino dedicated to the Hawaiian value Kuleana, or responsibility. Our school took on the responsibility of educating high school age students in September of 1943, when an annex of McKinley High School housed in Kaimuki Intermediate became officially known as Kaimuki High School. Our next story of Kuleana takes place at Kainalu Elementary School in Windward, Oahu, where a young student takes on the responsibility of warning senior citizens, like his great-grandmother, about the dangers of elder scams. The elderly are being scammed at $2.6 billion per year due to financial fraud and abuse. Here's a story of what happened to a Kainalu student's great-grandmother. My great-grandmother got a call from someone and she said, hello, is this Chris? Because I think she was expecting a call from Chris. And um, this, the person on the other side of, side of the phone said, Yes, this is Chris. Um, I'm in Mexico and I need some money because I'm in trouble. And so she, and he needed $2,000. And so she gave him $2,000. And then um, next time the person called again and he needed $3,000 this time. And so she wired him $3,000. 
she answered the phone and um, just said hello. And the caller said, hello, grandmother. And she said, you mean Granny. So she um, gave her name away. Um, granny is her affectionate name for all of us that call her Granny. Um, and then um, she said, is this my grandson? And the caller said, yes. And she said, is this Christopher? And she said, oh, the caller said, yes, this is Christopher. So in that few minutes, she gave away her personal name, and also she gave the caller um, understanding of who his name was. Unfortunately, I hear that story all the time. That's one of, we, one of the things we're talking about, how many scam artists there are. They do it over and over and over again. That's actually a very popular scam. It's not that your great-grandmother was stupid or dumb or anything like that. It's just that she loves her family very much. And she doesn't want to see any harm come to any family member. That's why she is so willing to give the money. We did a PSA about how my great-grandmother got scammed. We hope that our PSA will help people so they are more cautious about giving out personal information. A lot of the people that are being scammed do not realize they are being scammed because a lot of these con men, they're very good with their words. They're very good with the story. They're very good with manipulating people. And so that's one reason why they're able to get away with it. My advice to other seniors is to, to ask who it is first before saying who it is and don't give out your bank account number or any personal information or else the scammers might try to take the money. If you feel you've been a victim of scam, you should report it to the police or the city prosecutor's office for elder abuse justice unit. I'm Colton. And I'm Connor, reporting for Hiki No from Kainalu Elementary School. Our next story of Kuleana takes us to the Salt Lake District of Oahu where students, school staff, and lawmakers take the responsibility of raising awareness about the hazards of jaywalking at a major intersection near Aliamanu Middle School. Salt Lake Boulevard is the main corridor through the heavily populated Salt Lake neighborhood. In particular is the intersection at Alalilikoi and Salt Lake Boulevard, where there is a shopping center, public library, and two schools. Cars are constantly flying by Aliamano Middle School, which has about 710 students, while Aliamano Elementary School has about 841 students. This creates a hazardous mix in which there is a large amount of motor vehicle and foot traffic in a small, concentrated area. Going from the middle school and the elementary school down to the crosswalk is quite a, quite a little walk for them to turn and go back up into the shopping center. Uh, and so they jaywalk across that narrow strip out there which is very dangerous. Jaywalking, it's, also, it's illegal, and you must stay in the crosswalk area by crossing the street for your safety, and uh, the law states that you, uh, to cross any major street, you should be in a marked crosswalk. Some students are taking an active role in creating awareness of the situation. Well, I'm a part of National Junior Honor Society, and what we are doing to help raise awareness about jaywalking is we are hanging posters all around the school to just basically say that it's not just harming yourself, it can actually harm people around you too. Um, probably they know um, the consequences of jaywalking, that it's really dangerous, they might get hit if someone's not paying attention. But I guess um, they're willing to take that risk if they really want um, to go somewhere. Really dangerous, you can get hit by a car. Yes. Even teachers are getting involved by making a PSA in one of their video production workshops. We used to put signs out there, but it's too dangerous. The cars are too fast. They need to have a value and understanding that safety is the first thing. Once their kid is run over or a child is hurt out here, it's too late. Uh, it makes me very sad to see that adults sometimes don't set the example. And the students that jaywalk, it's not worth risking your life. In late 2011, the road was repaired and signs were put out to help with the flow of traffic. Other improvements to this stretch of Salt Lake Boulevard regarding pedestrian traffic and road widening are planned for the future. It's been a long time coming, um, so for the community, they have to be a bit more patient. I know they feel that they've been overly patient, but uh, government doesn't move sometimes as quick as business does. 
In an emailed statement, this is what Honolulu City Council member Romy Cachola had to say. Currently, engineers are studying the environmental impacts of the project and will release a formal study called an environmental assessment for the public to review late this year or early 2013. I have contacted the City's Department of Transportation Services to also study the history of accidents in this intersection. The problem of jaywalking and other traffic-related concerns in Salt Lake will continue unless the entire community gets involved, hopefully before something tragic happens. From Mali Amato Middle School, I'm Bailey Young for Hickey No. We're back at Kaimuki High School, one of six DOE schools in the Honolulu District. Kaimuki is a comprehensive four-year co-educational high school accredited by the Western Association of Secondary Schools and Colleges. With an enrollment of approximately 850, Kaimuki High takes on the kuleana or responsibility of educating students from the feeder schools of Jarrett and Washington Intermediate. Our next story illustrating the Hawaiian value of kuleana comes from Keaau High School on Hawaii Island where students tell the story of a community organizer who took on the responsibility of cleaning up Big Island beaches. On the windward side of the Big Island of Hawaii, there's a premier surfing spot called Honolii. Honolii is known for its consistent year-round surf. Not so long ago, Honolii was a dramatically different place, overgrown, littered, and unwelcoming to the general public. In 2003, a man named Keith Nels known as Brada Skibbs, took it into his own hands to clean up the beach. He has since formed a nonprofit group called Basic Image. Well, we started our first project down here in Honolulu in 2003 with a bunch of brothers and sisters that um, believed in cleaning up this place. And when we did it at the beginning, it was kind of like we had some negative, you know, people were saying that, you know, the county taking advantage of us, you know, everybody try, not gonna get done, but they never see the vision that we seen and I understood that, yeah, I couldn't blame them for feeling that way because it's something that nobody has been really doing. But the main purpose for us, what we're doing here is to educate our community, our kids, most of all about respect, about taking care of the aina, the ocean, water, invas invasive plants and planting native, but really coexisting and having a place where people can come and learn a lot of things from different uncles and aunties. A dramatic change has taken place at Honolii. The aina now glows from the loving touch of its caretakers. The work of Brada Skibbs and his group has progressed island-wide. Aside from the beautiful facelift Honolii went through, the Hakalao Mill also received the same treatment. Hakalao has transformed into a pristine and family-oriented beach park. This is what it's all about in Akekis. We're gonna get the kikis involved. For the future, you know, they carry on with the same aloha as, as we, we try to push on now. And that's, that's how I feel now. Now it's real porno over here. Kupuna Andy Kuali'i sums up his feeling and respect for their mission. Living with aloha, kokua, and ha'a ha'a, love, help and ha be humble. As the three things most of us Hawaiians we, we live by. And that is why this park is like this today. Brada Skibbs has received donations from others, but gives the money right back to the community through his surf events, which are free to all entrants. The events are truly feel good and include things like free food, prizes, entertainment, and a lot of aloha. Brada Skibbs held this event for every beach they helped out. Honolii, Hakalao, Waiuli in Keokaha, and Pohiki in the Puna area. Make sure to teach the keiki, and the only way that you can teach them is by example. So we lead by example, action speaks, that's our whole thing about what we do. But we allow everybody, and we allow everybody to come down to this beach park. Brada Skibbs can surf with a smile, knowing that his aloha will influence the youth to carry on the tradition he started. My name is Keenan Sartain, reporting from Keao High School for Hikino. Our next story of Kuleana comes from Eva Mackay Middle School on Oahu and proves that taking responsibility sometimes requires a heavy dose of tough love. 
Yes, I was definitely scared of him ever since I got my schedule. <laughs> yeah. To the stories the eighth graders told me, yeah, I was really intimidated by him. Gosh, I think Mr. Wong is strict. I've heard he's, I've heard he's mean, and I've walked in the hallway and I've seen him, and he, he yells now. Mr. David Wong, a science teacher at Makai Middle School, has a reputation for being the school's most frightening teacher on campus. Intimidating as Mr. Wong is, he has a different way of teaching his students that he's developed over his 21 years of being a teacher. Although he may seem frightening, he carries the best intentions for his students. It's not important that my students like me. Uh, my number one job is to build relationships with my students, but that the relationship itself will help them to be prepared for the next few years and maybe more years after that. That's fine. And it fits, right? Okay, she's already ahead of you. I'm strict and I have a high expectation of my students to be good communicators, communicate with me, communicate with each other. It's learning how to formulate those questions, formulate those uh, answers. And I, and, I, and I do that because it's, it's really the thinking process and if we can get students to practice asking good questions, we have evidence that they're being complex thinkers and with those complex higher order questions, they can pursue higher answers and more discovery for themselves. RJ, use two hands. You have two hands, use two hands. For me, the most surprising thing is uh, the, when students don't expect something and they discover without having expected it, that's, that's surprise. I want my students to become, first of all, kind people. I want them to be generous. I want them to be thankful. Uh, I want them to be community contributors as good citizens in this country, to give back of their talents and their skills. Uh, I want them to experience success and excellence in their life. I want them to be, um, I want them to have strong, healthy families. Yes, I do believe Mr. Wong is preparing me for high school because he's showing me how in the world of beyond, you know, if you don't have a plan, you don't get in. If you don't, ha if you don't, have, an if you don't have any good purpose, you're not going. They don't care. Mr. Wong is a great teacher, to be honest. I definitely believe he's preparing me for high school. Although Mr. Wong carries the reputation of the hammer, which stems from his authoritative personality, this makes the students look at him with a different kind of respect. It gives them the experiences they need to be successful in high school and beyond. His real-world teaching methods give students a level of responsibility and pushes them to become better people. I hope that my students will continue to uh, be appreciative, and usually it's after the fact. They don't usually, not usually appreciative while they're with me, uh, but they usually come back and say, thanks, I didn't realize it, but you really prepared me for high school or you prepared me for college. Uh, you, just, you prepared me to think better, ask better questions. Um, you taught me how to get along with people and to value relationships. And I, I would hope that they would be appreciative of that. Although Mr. Wong can be frightening at first, he only hopes that his students can appreciate everything he has taught them about life. This is Madeline Rodriguez with Evma Kai Middle School for Hikino. Welcome back to Kaimuki High School in Honolulu and our special look at the Hawaiian Valley known as Kuleana, which means responsibility. Our next story comes from students at Moana Lua High School on Oahu and proves that the highest form of Kuleana, or responsibility, comes from caring for another human being. Sometimes we are forced to learn this very early in life. Meet Jacob Genovese, a 17-year-old senior at Moanalua High School. Uh, right now, I'm a full-time student and I work a full, full job, or 40 hours a week, over at Coldstone in Waikiki. But Jacob's plans are bigger than just school and a job at Coldstone. Jacob dreamed of becoming a Marine. So I dropped out of school for like a day because I was told that I could join the Marines with a GED, but then I went down to the recruiters and he was like, no, you need your high school degree. And I was like, great. <laughs> but he isn't trying to join the military only for himself. This is Emily. Hi. And then this is Sean, our son. <laughs> Sean is, Sean is Sean, he's crazy. He's, uh, he's an eating machine. He's very energetic, very loud too. And uh, 
definitely all over the place ever since he learned how to crawl. With a family to support, Jacob had to sacrifice a lot. The biggest struggle in my life was probably adapting to, you know, being a new father and having someone depend on me. You know, being, you know, a senior in high school and having to break away from my friends so I could get a full-time job to pay for my son and everything I need and to live here on my own. The first three months were rough because, you know, they only sleep, he only slept for like three hours at night. He'd sleep all day, but then at night he was up every three hours, so sleep was definitely hard to come by. Did you ever want to quit? Do I want to quit my job? Every day. Every day. <laughs> but do I want to quit being a, a father or, and a provider? No. It's, it's a great feeling. It's, it's probably the best feeling I've ever had, you know? The happiest day of my life was the day Sean was born. You know? uh, it's my son, you know? So it's, it's an amazing thing. So that was probably, that was actually definitely the greatest day of my life. This is Brian Panetta from Moanalua High School for Hikino. We hope you've enjoyed this special edition of Hikino on the Hawaiian value kuleana, which means responsibility, as much as we've enjoyed presenting it to you. All of the stories we presented were conceived, shot, written, and edited by students like us. Proof positive that when it comes to producing stories that matter, Hawaii students Hikino can do. Be sure to tune in next week when Hikino students explore the Hawaiian value known as ha'a ha'a, which means humbleness. Broadcasts of Hiki No are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.